is the Dean, the Dean Show. Oh man, salam alaikum, peace be with you. How are you, Hamza Tortoise? Is that you? That is me, yeah. Brother, you got all this time to hit the bag. What about time for the Dean Show and the Dawah? Well, let's go. Are you ready? Let's go now, bro. We're going to be right back with Hamza Dorses here on the Dean Show. <laughs> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Dean Show. All over the news is hysteria. One of the greatest men to walk the earth has been insulted. And we'd be up in a war too if Jesus, Moses, Abraham, all these mighty messengers who came to teach the people out of love, God sent them to us and there's a certain group of people insulting them. And we want to know how should we, as those who have submitted to the Creator and not His creation, how should we respond the right way, not the wrong way. So when we come back, our next guest, Hamza's here on The Dean Show. We'll be right back. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is the Dean. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean. This is the Dean Show. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Akhi, how are you? Good, alhamdulillah. You got a nice right cross there, you know. Did you get surprised? They jumped out from the bag, invited you to be on the Dean show. You're working out, training. <laughs> how long you been boxing for? <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a while. A oh, while, wow. yeah. At least um, maybe five years now. Yeah. Five so, years. So, I mean, look, we're not here to, about, to talk about boxing or jiu-jitsu. You heard me open the show. I mentioned that, look, we'd be in an uproar. We'd be upset, man. Jesus, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim as he loves and reveres Jesus, one of the mightiest messengers of God. Moses, Abraham, they all came with Islam, submission to the will of God. The last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came with that same message. He was a brother to Jesus, is right? Yes. And he called people to worship the creator, not the creation. Yes. And to be of the best character that you can be. Yes. Loving mankind. Yes. And now, how should we? Tell us, you, you obviously know what's going on. You got some jealous people, some envious people, whatever they are, you know, sick hearts, sick minds, and they made this horrific movie. What do you guys say about it? Well, there's a lot to say. First and foremost, we have to react in a positive way, okay? It doesn't mean keeping silent. We shouldn't keep silent because as Muslims, we're here to do what? To call people to this amazing, beautiful message called Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, Ud'u ila sabili rabbik. Call people to the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. Keeping silent is calling no one to anything. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to burn embassies and kill ambassadors. This is haram and we know this. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, upon whom be peace, he never killed any ambassador. Even Musaylima, the fake Prophet, there was a respect. So we don't do things like that. We don't kill innocent human beings. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is no harming and no reciprocating of harm. And he said that if you want to be shown mercy, then you have to show mercy and compassion to others. He said, and Aisha radiallahu anha, his wife, relates that if you put compassion in something and kindness, it elevates it. You take away compassion and kindness, it degrades it. So we, we know these teachings, but... Go ahead, go I, I mean to cut you off uh, before I Sorry. lose my thought. You said mercy, compassion. Why do people see that as the antithesis to Islam nowadays? It's usually when you say Islam, they think barbaric. They of think, course. you know, swords flying, you know, <laughs> you know kamikazes, suicide bombers. Why, why well, do you there are two is? reasons. The first reason is that some of us, we don't get up and we don't warn. We don't get up and we don't talk to people about this beautiful message. Although its self-image psychology defines who we are as an ummah, as a Muslim community. Because the Prophet said, لَا يُؤْمِنُ أَحَدَكُمْ hatta يُحِبَّ لِأَخِهِ مَا يُحِبَّ لِنَفْسِهِ You won't truly believe. You won't come closer to Allah جل, to the creator of everything that exists, unless you love for others what you love for yourself. And what do we love the most? We love Allah. We love Muhammad upon whom be peace. We love Islam. So if we want to be believers, we have to give it to other people. So people just don't know. The other point is, we have systemic issues. What does that mean? It's a big word. Systemic means there is a system out there. There's the media, Fox News, Bill O'Reilly, Pamela Geller. I don't believe she wants to ban. What's that food? What's that food? 
What food? Falafel. The, falafel? Because she falafel, said falafel. it's the food of the, of the Mujahideen. Oh my I God. mean, th this woman's, she needs help. May Allah guide all of us, inshallah. Amen. So the point is that we have all these people filtering this information, giving da'wah, their da'wah, their call to the wider society. So it's input, output. If you give people rubbish to listen, that's all they're going to know. So we have to, one, call people to Islam and expose this kind of systemic effect, the effect of the system. And the way to do that, to do that is arise and warn and talk to people in a really nice way. Because we shouldn't fall for the trap, Brother Eddie, that this is about freedom of speech. It has nothing to do with freedom of speech. Do you know why? Because right. in every single society, freedom of speech is restricted. Every society. Give, give us some examples. Libel laws, hate speech laws, product defamation. You have perjury, contempt of court. There's a whole list in European and in American culture. In legal theory, there's so many, so many restrictions to speech. So in a way, this is like a smoke screen for open season on Islam in a way. Now we don't react in a negative way, we're not victims. The Prophet ﷺ was never a victim. But we take this opportunity to now expose the duplicit behavior. Why is it that a cartoonist in France was sacked from his job because he wrote a piece against the son of Sarkozy? So for political sensitivities, there's no freedom of speech. When it comes to the best man that works on this planet, there's freedom of speech. So in this particular situation, he what did he do? He wrote. Yeah, he he wrote against the son of Sarkozy, who was a politic. Who was this? Well, Sarkozy so was the, the president of France. The president of France. Yes. So for our viewers who have no idea. Yeah, sure. And then he got canned. He got yeah. fired. He got canned, man. Okay. Well, there's so many more. For example, in Kate. What about this recent? Yes, okay, tell, that's recent the news. Duchess of Kent, I believe she's called now. Yeah. Okay. What happened with that? Well, they took a photo of her. Uh huh. Okay. Freedom of speech, expression. European outlets wanted to take that photo and publish it everywhere. France, what happened? They apologized. They said sorry. They said she's a human being. She must be respected. But what about Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the best man that walked on this planet? So we have to expose this as not a freedom of speech issue because you know people think now that we don't want debate and dialogue. Islam is all about debate and dialogue, all about intellectual discourse. For instance, even in the 8th century, 9th century, we had these people called the Dahriya. Now the Dahriya were the equivalent atheists of the, of the time. You had the likes Abu Hanifa and all these big scholars, Al-Ghazali, Ibn Taymiyyah and others, discussing with these type of people in a very nuanced, articulate manner, but couched in human language. Now, even if you look at political philosophy, we have this man called John Stuart Mill. John Stuart Mill was the 19th century British philosopher. And he was the kind of prophet, if you like, of the liberal tradition of freedom of speech. And you know what he said? It's very interesting and they should learn from their own tradition. He said that speech, you must speak for the competition of ideas. So you have truth, accountability and progress. So this was the objectives of freedom of speech. But in this day and age, we don't have the real freedom of speech or the real speech or the objectives of speech. Why? Because we think freedom to degrade and insult is part of speech. But this is haram in Islam and we have to teach people these values. I give an example, Eddie. Say you've done something wrong, right? Yes. And I want to count you. I want to put you in your place. And if I start by saying, Eddie, you smell, man. You're so ugly. You're so this, you're so that. Your mama this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you going to say? You're going to be like, what? <laughs> you're going to hear me, right? Am I going to account you properly? No. Oh. So using vile and degrading language goes against the very objectives of speech. Think about it. Using vile and degrading language goes against the very objectives of speech. So I want to account you, accountability, which is part of the objectives of speech, but using vile language and degradation goes against that very objective. I'll give you another example. Say I'm President Obama. Okay, I don't look like him, but mm -hmm. my smile is as big. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Say I'm President Obama and I win the current elections. And I start my speech, my address to the people by swearing and rapping. Imagine he goes, what's up? Yo, yo, beep, beep, beep. Mm -hmm. Is he going to fulfill the objectives of his speech? No. Do you see? So freedom to insult is actually goes against the very objectives of speech in the first place. What about truth and science and progress? Stephen Hawking, a very famous British physicist, he wants to explain string theory, some complex theory in physics. Imagine he does that by using pornographic imagery. Are you going to understand him? You're never going to understand him. So, this so-called freedom to insult and freedom to degrade goes against the very objectives of speech. How does Islam solve the problem? 
Well, we're all about truth. وَتَوَصُوا بِالْحَقِّ we're all about accountability, commanding the ma'roof, forbidding the munkar, commanding the good and forbidding the wrong. We're all about progress and we're all about the search for truth and knowledge, but couched in human language, with manners, true civilization. This is why Allah Azza in the Quran says, He doesn't like the utterance of evil speech in the public domain. So you see how Islam, we fulfill the objectives of speech, but we don't have this ridiculous concept called freedom to insult. A Muslim mustn't insult anybody. We shouldn't harm anyone. There is no harming and no reciprocating of harm according to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that includes with your tongue. There are many ahadith, prophetic traditions, attribute to the best man that walked this planet that says, "Be careful of your tongue. Be careful what you say. It'll be one of the first things that's going to be thrown into the hellfire. Be conscious of Allah. Be conscious of the Creator, not creation. And let's discuss maybe." after the break on how Islam fulfills the objective of speech but yet it's couched in human language to connect with human beings in a profound way not like this this means they've lost the debate they don't want to have intellectual discussion it yeah. means they've lost the debate exactly exactly here with Hamza Tarsis Dorzis. Dorzis. I got it we'll be right back here on the Dean Show you think these things are gonna bring you happiness you know why you keep going back to the club and you keep going back to these desires? Because you never find satisfaction. It's going to end up causing you, if it hasn't already, a lot of pain. You think you're happy? You're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself. You really are. What we are offering in Islam, what we have found in Islam for ourselves, is a means by which our hearts are at peace. They're at rest. They're not discontent. We are pleased with what we have. And if we're going to worship something, I figured I might as well worship the Creator instead of any of the creations. Now, in, upon investigating all the religions, I remember finding out the meaning of what Islam is, what a Muslim is. Those who surrender their self to God is a Muslim. Those who surrender, submit to God. God's will that is it Islam was pure it was just you just pray to God your creator Back here on the Dean Show, and we're discussing this movie that was made insulting the last and final messenger sent to mankind, who came with the same message of Jesus, Moses, and Abraham, calling people to be the best that you can be by worshiping the Creator, not His creation, doing good. And we see some events that are unfolding. Muslims, you know, it's sad to say, you know, uh, burning flags and embassies and all this. So in the early opening of the show, Definitely, this is opposite of Islam. Is that yes, clear? Yes. We don't have a right, a green light, to go looting and to. Of course not. And, and isn't it interesting? Just before I go on, I mean, when there was looting in UK, I heard the Muslims were the ones who were stepping up and they were guarding the businesses. We were. We were. That's exactly what we were doing. While the people who, from, you know, the non, not all of them, obviously, but tell her, you're from UK. What was going on with yeah, that? Yeah, well, there was the summer riots, the England riots, yeah. where there was huge riots up and down the country, and. The police were scattered everywhere so they couldn't protect the community. So what the Muslims did, they, they rose up and they commanded the good and the forbid, forbade the evil. They defended the community. The whole community. N it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim, not, they were defending all Muslims. Well, well, the, well that's the role of Islam. That's Islam is here to defend every, the humanity. Ukhrijat linnas, Allah says in the Quran, which means we're here for the people. We're here to protect people, to maintain their affairs, to help them. I heard this was in the papers and this yeah, was, it was everywhere. everywhere. It, was it was everywhere, everywhere huh? Yeah. So this is what we should be doing. This is how we should be example to mankind. So does this sadden, you know, your heart, you see this when they start to, you know, bring the snapshots, Muslims going crazy and, you know, what, 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 what 
should be our response to that. Now, we know this, obviously, when we see these movies, this is horrific. This has been there since day one. They're going to be insulting the truth, trying to degrade the truth. But now... Uh, but we need to teach people who Muhammad was, sallallahu We need to teach the people, huh? For example, Muhammad was a prophet. Yeah. He was sent with a message, just like all the other prophets, like Jesus and Abraham and Moses, upon whom be peace. And what did they say? Worship the one true God. Have, have pure monotheism. W would you be offended now, the not yet Muslim out there? He's like, man, hey, you know, if, if they insulted Jesus, or Moses, let's say, how course, would you feel? Any what would prophet, you say? If you offend any prophet, any prophet, this is blasphemous in Islam. This is against the Islamic tradition. Any prophet, Moses, Zakaria, Elias, Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Of course I love Jesus. Loving the prophets is part of our faith. You don't love Jesus, you can't be a Muslim. Well, I mean, but do you believe he's God? Of course not. Why not? Someone, someone says, look, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. What do you got to say? Well, they say, how can you love him if you don't worship him? The Christian, now, our brothers in, in humanity. No, of course. Uh, well, first and foremost, Jesus, he taught us to worship the one true God. To worship the creator, not the creation. So, he never so how can someone who's creation now saying, worship me? And Jesus never claimed that anyway. So you're going to... Never? Of course. He never called people to worship him? Never. Okay. Never, ever. We're, we don't find it anywhere. Yeah. And the point is, what we have to understand is this is that it fits the whole plan of God. If you look at the Old Testament, the New Testament, even the Torah, the Quran, you see it's all about worshipping the divine. No worshipping your ego, no worshipping human flesh, no worshipping animals, no worshipping society, mm -hmm. but worshipping the Creator. This is why Ibn Qayyum, he was a 14th century theologian, Do you know what he said? What he if said? you want true freedom, you want true liberty, you want true freedom, then don't worship your desires, don't worship others, Worship Allah, worship God, the one true God that frees you from the shackles of your ego because we're, we're enslaved to our ego and our desires. We're enslaved to society, what they want from us. But if you enslave yourself to God, it frees you from these things. Can you be like someone who's not really into talking about the prophets and that, and they've just got their mind warped with MTV? Do you got that in UK? Yeah. Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> and you know, nightclubs and that. Can they fit into this area of obviously this is a big thing? Like, let me tell you, they, what, tell, phone, what phone do you have? What, what? what phone do you have? Oh, you don't want to know my phone. <laughs> I got a $5 phone. Oh, do you? <laughs> I don't have it's a phone. So, but okay, I, so you had the iPhone, right? Yeah. Or the iPad, or uh -huh. the Blackberry, famous yeah. phones, okay? You see, I'm not kidding, see? Oh, subhanAllah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Muslims should be humble. That's, that's the only way forward. So the point is, brother, let me just make this point here. They don't know that the reason they have the iPhone, yeah. the laptop, and the iPad is because of Muhammad upon whom he peace. What? Mr. Hamza Zouz, you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. The reason we have the iPhone and the laptop is because of Muhammad upon whom we peace. Why? Let me tell you. The scientific revolution in Europe, the renaissance in Europe that allowed us to develop these things and be a milestone for these things in history only came about as a result of Muslim Spain. What was Muslim Spain? Muslim Spain was when the Quran, the book of the Muslims, the hadith, the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad upon whom peace were implemented socially and individually in Muslim Spain. And the historians call it the convivencia, which means the coexistence, where Muslims, Jews and Christians could work together in love and harmony to look into the interconnecting principles of nature, which means to look into the science and to look into progress. And this is why Professor Thomas Arnold, famous historian, famous academic Arabist, what did he say? He said, if it wasn't for Muslim Spain, we would not have the Renaissance. And we developed things like the algorithm, which was in, from the Islamic era. The algorithm is the thing that you require to have things like the iPhone, the iPad, and the PC. Now, the reason it's from Muhammad upon whom he peace, because he was the carrier of the message of Islam, which was the Quran and the traditions. This was implemented in Spain. Spain facilitated all this tranquility to look into the interconnecting principles of nature that formed the Renaissance and the scientific revolution, which subsequently in our era formed the things that we have. It's all from Muhammad upon whom he peace. Another one. You've been to court before? Mm -hmm. You've yes, been to court? Yes. You, when you go into court, you're supposed to presume what? Why are you presumed? Guilty or innocent? You presumed innocent, right? Before yeah. you guilt, before guilty. So mm -hmm. innocent before proven guilty. Yeah. Well, in most cases, anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the point is, you walk into a court of law and you have confidence that you're innocent before proven guilty. True. Yes. Who is that from? Muhammad, upon whom be peace. They don't know this. And the last and final message. I am telling you, bro. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. King Louis the Ninth. 
He was responsible for forming this principle, the presumption of innocence in Europe. He traveled to the East. He met a monk, and this is according to his chronicler. Yeah, His chronicler was writing all of this history down. He met this monk. This monk knew the Bible. This monk knew the Quran, and he knew some hadith. The prophetic traditions of the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace. And he quotes a hadith to King Louis the Ninth. If you want justice in Europe, then follow this civilization. Because they he implement said that. He said that and he quoted a hadith word for word. If you don't believe me, go to And a hadith this is a saying of the last of saying of, a, of, 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 of the last and final prophet. Amazing, of amazing. Peace. And King Louis the Ninth went back to Europe and he established the presumption of innocence. By the way, before this principle, do you know what people had to do to prove themselves innocent? They'll fight a duel, and if you win, you're innocent. Or you'll be burnt at the stake or burnt alive, and if you survive, you're innocent. So Muhammad upon whom be peace, gave a whole civilization the presumption of innocence. And we could find this in the article by Marcel Boissard in 19, 1980. It was published in the Journal of Middle East, Eastern Studies. And it's called on the probable influence of Islam on the presumption of innocence. We have even more. Tolerance came from Muhammad upon whom be peace. Because John Locke, who is the post-enlightenment thinker in Britain, he developed treaties on tolerance and civil governance. And he even, he even influenced the founding fathers of this nation of America. And John Locke was influenced by Edward Pocock, the first Orientalist that traveled to the East. And he learned from Islam and he was taught Islamic studies at Oxford University and John Locke says, I'm only influenced, I'm only influenced by Edward Pocock. And John Locke wrote on civil governance. Do you know what he writes in that book? Where? He says, governance is a vicegerency. Translate that in Arabic. Khilafa, the Islamic principle, the words that Allah uses in the Quran. So Islam influenced Edward Pocock, Edward Pocock influenced John Locke, John Locke influenced the whole of Europe in terms of tolerance and the founding fathers of America. And this goes so these were three things, brother. Yeah. Progress and science, presumption of innocence, and treaties on tolerance and governance. All from Muhammad upon whom be peace. They don't know who this man is. And now he's, and now he's who he is because the Creator chose him to be the last exactly. of the messenger. Exactly. So it got links back to the Creator. Of course, as you know why? Because you think any man could develop these three core cool principles that develop every single civilization? You think it's a joke? An aberration of history? Some kind of chance? No, this is a divine plan. And we see, that's why the Quran says, Muhammad upon me peace is a rahmah and mercy to mankind. So every time you use the iPhone, every time you use your PC, every time you look into science at school, every time you walk into a court of law, every time you see different people and different nations in this society because of tolerance, thank Allah. Even if you don't believe in Him, you know why? Because He's sent down Muhammad upon him peace to give us these things. Amazing, amazing. So many, these are, these are facts, not fiction. I gave you all the references. Maisal Bussad, Professor Thomas Arnold, and Jay Walker, a historian that talks about John Locke and Edward facts, Pocock. It's facts, all that. These are facts, facts and history. Not fiction. Get to know this man. Get to know this man. Be better for you to get to know this man. The last and final messenger of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was a messenger like Jesus, Moses, Abraham. He came with the same message? Yes. What was that message? To worship the creator, not the creation. That's right. We'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. On the outside, everything looks good. You see the $100,000 cars, you see a lot of diamonds, you see a lot of females, and they think that this is, you know, this is a life. This is, this is, like, you know, paradise right here on Earth. It's not anyone's job to go into someone's heart and change their heart. Your job is to tell people what the truth is. And the reality of it is, while we're sitting here, while I'm sitting here constantly paying for the disease, the cure was free. Listen, Eddie, you've been showing on your videos on YouTube that you're some kind of jujitsu master. Now you've met your match. I'm going to show that boxing is better than jujitsu. Hamza Torsis, getting aggressive. I'm a Muslim boy. I got MB printed on my ring. I sing for my Muslim boys. And my sisters doing their thing for the sake of him. Allah, when I'm in need of anything, I turn to him. Allah, success is what he brings. Oh, Muslim boy. I got MB printed on my ring. I sing for my Muslim boys. And my sisters doing their thing for the sake of him. Allah, when I'm in need of anything, I turn to him. Allah, success is what he brings. Oh, 
onwards in Bala from South London. They don't even know what it means, it's too real for them. I'ma put it on them thick for a reason. They need to start thanking the laugh for the air they're breathing. Don't diss me back, that's a waste of time. I'm already submitting, I'm already on a straight line. I'm already repenting for spitting foul lines. Already planning to quit rapping, bro. I got mine. Don't worry about me, worry about you. I'm in the last army instead of the little crew. You signed to record labels, I signed to a law. I'm worshipping God, you're still worshipping your car. Bro, I'm a Muslim, you don't know what you are. Just a lost clown on the road trying to be a star. Screaming out real talk in a little boy's game. You need to get serious, start using your brain. Don't want to hear about your life, how you're grooving all your pain. How you draw your four or five, cock it back and let it rain. I don't know that before, bro, it's time for something new. I know you guide the youth just like I'm guiding you. My boys and my sisters doing their thing for the sake of him. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on the Dean Show, special guest Hamza here on the Dean Show, all the way from UK. How is everything in UK? UK is good. UK yeah. is good. Alhamdulillah. I, I, We're I, moving forward. Mashallah. Tell us now, why do you think it is people have this animosity, this hatred in their heart? You'll see when you'll talk to some people about Islam, you'll try to be rational, reasonable, you know, kind, compassionate, and some people will take to it, they'll accept because it's the fastest growing way of life in the world. It, it makes sense. Some people, they just get this. And mass, uh, they they get this rage, this this anger. Some will you hear on you see on the on the comments, the curse words, the foul language, the insulting movies. Why do you think this is? Well, if you think about it, Eddie, if you live in an environment, okay, and everything in this environment says Islam is bad, it's terroristic, it kills people, it's backward, and they hear this not only in the media, on the radio, on the news, in the newspapers. And also sometimes they may see Muslims who may not be the best either sometimes, okay? So you have all of this environment. What are you going to think? You, that's what you're going to do. Human beings have an ability to stereotype. Human beings look at patterns. That's why even science is based on looking at patterns. So the point is, we have to break that pattern now. And say, wait, 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 there's some issues here. You got the wrong side of the story. This is why the things I told you now about Muhammad upon to be peace, John Doe next door doesn't know about this. He doesn't know how Muhammad upon me peace affected his life in such a profound way. The iPhone, the iPad, science, technology, tolerance, justice, presumption of innocence, all these things from this man, and they don't even know. They don't even know. So this is why we have to tell them. It's our responsibility to go out there and to call people to Allah Azza wa Jal, to call people to the Creator, to worship the Creator, not the creation. And this is our responsibility. We shouldn't be pointing the finger anymore, Eddie. We shouldn't be victims. The Prophet Muhammad upon me peace was never a victim. He never said, oh, look at these people, that people, look what they're saying about me. The man's bringing me down. Exactly. <laughs> he's not saying that. He's saying, wait a minute. I am, I'm here with a message. Even, even in the battle of the trench, what happened when we were defending Muslims and non-Muslims of Medina? Defending everybody, not just Muslims. And the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, they thought we're going to be taken over and wiped out clean. The Prophet Muhammad upon me peace, what did he do when he had to remove the boulder and he st striked it so he could break and there were sparks and what did he say? He went, Allahu Akbar, God is great. God is great. God is greater. Persia is yours. The world is yours. And they're thinking, look at this guy. This guy is almost going to be annihilated. But yet his vision is to spread this beautiful, harmonious tradition, religion to the rest of humanity. That man was a leader. That man was, didn't fear creation, he feared the Creator. Whoever fears the Creator, whoever is conscious of Allah, conscious of God, is not conscious of anything else. And that was the reality of this man. He had such a vision for humanity. And that's how we should be. We should have this vision too. That we're going to call people to this amazing tradition. Don't worship the creation, worship the Creator. Just a few more questions in short. Of course. How can we, and how do you like to, when you're 
talking to the youth or talking to the adults and it seems like all they have on their mind is Lady Gaga, Goo Goo and 50 yes. Cent and you know all this is wrapped in their mind, they're consumed with movies, music and we're talking about now oh, religion, something that's kind of odd for a lot of people but you know hey look we've been there done that and it's beautiful you get excited talking about the Creator and paradise, the rewards that you get for worshiping Him and at the end of this life what do you, what do you like to tell them you know to get them from out of that non-reality to this reality? What do, you, sure. what do you do to get them out of the zone? It is very hard, but I think the most important thing to do, especially when it's connecting with other human beings, is basically to empathize with them. You have to empathize, because sometimes, Eddie, you know when we're giving da'wah, which means calling people to Islam, calling people to the worship of the Creator and of the creation, when we do this, we already judge someone. Mm -hmm. So for example, say you were an atheist, yeah, and I knew that. But my view of an atheist was he's cold-hearted, he's scientific, he's arrogant, he's egotistical. I have all these judgments on what an atheist is. And I think, if I think you're an atheist, what am I giving da'wah to? I'm giving da'wah to the judgment, not to the person. So as Muslims, we should be like the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace and come with a blank canvas mm -hmm. and not really judge them. Even if we know they may be a disbeliever or they may be an atheist, don't use your judgments because you're going to be giving doubt to the judgment, not to the reality. So first and foremost, we have to empathize and understand the position. Why are I in this state? Why do people drink and take drugs and go to parties all the time and go to clubs? Why? It's because this is called self annihilationism which in a simple way means they don't like who they are they don't know who they are the big questions who are you why are you whose are you for whom are you they haven't answered these questions so we have to fulfill that gap and tell them about these things and tell them that the thing that they're doing is also religious that's what it says it's still religion for them doing these repetitive acts continuously whether drinking alcohol playing games whatever the case may be is like a religion, it's part of their way of life. That's and a we way say, of life. We have a way of life too. And how do you know your way of life is correct? Well, I don't know, I just want to have fun. Well, you know what? I think I've got evidence for my way of life. What do you mean evidence? Well, do you want to hear this? Do you want to understand the concept of Islam? Yeah, sure, well, then talk to them. Talk to them about Allah, His reality, God, His reality. Talk about the Quran, this book that shook the world, this book that made the world, this book that would save the world. We got to go, we got to cut out just real quickly. Some people, just so they know, you're not an Arab. No, I'm not. I look you're, Arab. So you're, you're actually from uh, Greece. Greece? Yeah. Dikanes? Yeah, I see. All right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you actually, uh, Islam is reaching the Greeks, the Italians, the Polish, I mean, Latinos. Er Latinos, everybody from all over the world. So just to make this. The clear, Bosnians. The Bosnians, it came to Greece. It's there. Is there a lot of Muslims in Greece? There's about a million Muslims in Greece. In Greece. A lot of them are migrants, but yeah. indigenous Greeks, about 300,000. Amazing. So tell us now in short for the Greek out there, for the, uh, the, the, the uh, um, Mexican, for the Italian, whoever's out there, the American, and they like what we had to say, and they're like, you know what, they're getting a different perspective now. Tell us in short, you know, what is Islam calling a human being to? In short, what is Islam all about? Well, Islam is fundamentally, Islam is fundamentally brothers, sisters, and friends that Allah, God, is calling you to Darus Salaam, the house of peace. He wants peace for you, He wants mercy for you. And the way to do that is by understanding your purpose in life. Your purpose in life is to worship the Creator, not worship your desires and self, not worship social pressure, the celebrity culture, but worship the thing that's much higher and transcendent, above and beyond. And, to, and by worshiping God and seeking His pleasure, you get pleased. So you have double pleasure, and then you end on the Day of Judgment with good deeds on your scale, and you enter paradise. Because God w is inviting you to the house of peace. In the Quran, the book of the Muslims, Allah, God says, God invites you to the house of peace, to bliss, to tranquility. This life is just a test. And you pass this test by being the best person you can possibly be. So, believe in His oneness. He's not two, He's not three, He's not four, He's not five. He's uniquely one. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say God is uniquely one. And then you just worship Him. Simple as that. And how do you know how to worship Him? You follow what the Qur'an says, that's the word of God. And you follow what Muhammad says, upon him be peace. Because we believe this to be revelation too, because he was the carrier of the word of God. So worship God, it's that simple. It liberates you from the restrictions of this life and allows you to see the expanse of the hereafter. And it's as simple as that. And you don't have to be an Asian or a Desi 
or any other thing. You don't have to change your DNA to be a Muslim. The, one of the first Muslims was black. One of the first Muslims was a woman. There are Muslims from all across the country. That's why Malcolm X, when he traveled, he went to Hajj, the pilgrimage. He saw all peoples together in the same white clothes, equal in front of God. That's what Islam is, to liberate you from your ego and your desires, to liberate you from social pressure. And we've got so many pressures by enslaving yourself, worshipping God, loving God, and it frees you from that, and you enter paradise. God bless you. Thank you very much. May God Almighty, the Creator, reward you for being with us, and taking us time. We look too. forward to having you back here on the Deen Show again. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace be with you. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Deen Show. You got to hear it here. We don't like when people insult the last and final messenger sent to mankind, or Jesus, or Moses, or Abraham. They were the best of mankind. They were calling people to worship the Creator, not the creation. But there's a way that we go about. There's a way that we go about explaining things to the people. And it's not through flipping cars, burning flags, killing people. No. It's by educating them and calling to them to the truth with wisdom and fair preaching. The best way, because we're following the best of mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So get out there, invite the people to the truth. Live the truth, invite the people to the truth, and we invite you to it. Pick up the verbatim word of God. Give us a call, 1-800-662-ISLAM. And we'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Until then, peace be unto you.